Let's move on now and have a conversation about our, our next topic um, mm. for this morning. There was some drama in Parliament yesterday, unexpectedly, um, as we're told that, you know, the, the motion, the second reading for the anti-LGBTQ uh, debate in Parliament had been um, passed. And so let's take a look at the confrontation that happened between the Minister for Communications, Honorable Esla Owusu Ekufo, and that of the MP for Tamale Central, um, Comrade <laughs> Mutala Mohammed. The statement I remember I made, I made several statements, but the statement I remember vividly I made, I said every single member in this house must be allowed to debate on the issue. So we know the position of every single member of this house, those who are for it and those who are against it. I have made that statement. So if, that's, if that is the statement you are asking me to withdraw, I humbly withdraw that statement. Honorable, honorable member, you made a specific statement in relation to the minister. I sat here and repeatedly heard Honorable Mutala referred to me as a practitioner of LGBT to the hearing of everyone in this house. I, I, I sat here and repeatedly heard him Honorable Minister, shout at the top of his voice Honorable, and referred to me as a practitioner of LGBT. And uh, every single last one of you is behaving as if you didn't hear it. Honorable, and if in response to that I say he is mad, it is only a madman who, who will refer to his colleague in this house as a practitioner of LGBTQ. When you haven't seen me having sexual intercourse with your wife or your daughter or your mother. Honorable Minister. When you haven't caught me having sexual intercourse with your wife or your daughter or your mother. Honorable you Minister. Sit there and refer to me in those terms. In those terms. Honorable Minister. And we call ourselves honorable members of this house. When you all hear it and pretend that suddenly you've lost your sense of hearing. Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, I beg of you, do me that honest, please. Honorable Minister, I beg of you, just do me that honest, please. Just do me that honest. All right, and so that is the Minister of Communication, Honorable Esla Usukufu, obviously peeved from some comments that were made not into the microphone, but seemed to have been directed at her, and she was not too happy about it. But again, like I said, this conversation is all about the report of the committee on the anti-LGBTQ bill that has now been adopted in Parliament. And we're told that that's the second reading, and so um, then we'll move on um, to the rest before it is actually passed into law. Ellen. Well, if you insult somebody and uh, you're in the same space with the person and the person you're yeah, asked to retract, and you say you mean retract, the person also has a right to reply, and I think she did. Nobody needs to defend Honorable Oslo. So <laughs> she's human enough to defend herself. So for me, this altercation, Honorable Mutala said what he said, and he got the reply for, for, for it. Mm. You think that he should have withdrawn the statement yes, that he, he made? Yes, he should have. I think so. But he refused to withdraw it. And, uh, but he said he didn't make it into the microphone. It doesn't matter. This was a conversation. It doesn't matter. Well, it wasn't it a, a conversation. conversation. Not a conversation. According but to, he also says that he was told he was mad. To, according to Honorable uh, Oslo Wusu, he said it on top of his voice. Everybody heard it. He said he would not retract. So she also has a right to defend herself. As I said, nobody needs to defend Honorable Oslo mm. Wusu. She gave... Uh, the reply as she saw fit. Are you surprised that no MP stood up to be counted in opposition of the anti-LGBTQ no. bill yesterday? <laughs> I would have been because surprised. a lot of Ghanaians, or well, some Ghanaians, have taken to social media to actually, you know, show some surprise. Why? Because they thought that some in, or some MPs were against the anti-LGBTQ bill, and so they were surprised that none of them stood up to be counted. Why would anybody be against it when the people you are representing are against it? On such matters, this is not your personal, your personal bias. It mm. is what the people you are representing are telling you to go and do. Every single member seated in that house is there because some people sent him or her there. And I believe with this whole thing coming up, everybody has gone back home, has gone to hear 
what opinion leaders, chiefs, clergy, their own people have to say about it. So I would have been very surprised if any member would have gone against it when your own people, because I haven't heard from any part of the country mm. that any community or any constituency in this country is interested in, 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 in LGBTQ affairs. Mm. In fact, we are trying hard to get people not to bitter people that they mm. think are practicing this. Yeah. So any law that will protect all of us so that we know the limits, what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do, every community, every con and constituency will be for it. So I would have been shocked if any one MP mm. would come and tell us that his community, his constituency said he should, he should vote against it. Well, the so as for me, if I'm not, I would have been surprised if somebody has stood up against it. There may not be a position in Parliament, but <coughs> yesterday the country manager <coughs> for Amnesty International, uh, Genevieve Partington, also spoke. And she says that for her, she doesn't even understand why this bill um, is still being debated in Parliament because it infringes on human rights and on the freedom of association. Who's human rights? Well, the human rights of everyone. What is the title of the bill? Ghanaian values. Mm -hmm. We, as Ghanaians, say we want this. And that's enough? Well, I'm asking this because it's not just here. That, oh, oh. No, the important thing is that our parliament, uh -huh. the people who represent us, are going to pass it. Mm. And they are doing that because we, as Ghanaians, say we want this. What about the Ghana AIDS Commission and their concern about this as well? Because they're saying that for them, their job is to provide some health support mm -hmm. to persons who may have contracted HIV as a result of, you know, their LGBTQ practices, etc. Now, they are worried that with the bill still in the state that it is, they may not be able to get donor funding to be able to supply some of these medical supplies to these people. So and for them, should, that's a concern. They should look at other ways and means of getting funding mm. for, for, for this. I mean, we can raise funds right here in Ghana. My point is this. This is what proper Ghanaian, what, cultural values, mm. whatever, that's a name. That, yeah. That, they've changed it. Whatever it is, it is meant for Ghanaians. And as, as Ghanaians... Yeah. We have sent our representatives to go and pass it. All our 275 representatives say, because we said they should do it, mm. they are doing it. And they have to do it because we said they should do it. Okay. Anybody else who does not agree with us, uh, you are not a Ghanaian or you are not uh, what, a, a key stakeholder in this. It is our culture. Okay. It is our society. And this is how we want to run it. Nanaya, what do you make of this? Which one? Well, let's start off with Ursula and well, her outburst yesterday, of course. That was not an outburst. That was pain. Okay. You could see pain in her. For the first time, I saw pain in the eyes of um, Mrs. Ursula Ekufu. Mm. You know, she's a very... But you saw pain. So whatever brought that, I think that there are two adults in the house. It's possible they are even friends. Mm. So I think they should try and make up. And I believe since it wasn't said publicly, maybe the media shouldn't have brought it up, shouldn't have covered it, his hair part of it. Because what I saw was not anger but pain. Mm. So I think that it, it is very, if he, Honorable uh, Mutala, which is unlike him, actually said that, it's, it's not right. Mm. It's an unfortunate statement to designate anybody as gay. Okay. It, it is not, it is not the best. Mm. So he should find a way to apologize and let's sleep in. Certainly she, she is not. I mean, for the eyes of everybody, she's married and all that. So, I mean, I think that that one is internal matter and they should deal with it and make up this so it does not escalate. Okay. But what do you make of Amnesty International's position and that of Ghana AIDS Commission and their worry that they may not receive funding if the bill is passed in its current form? There is money in Ghana. It is a castle so come there. We should look for money to look after our own. But the, they, the, I, I the thought person they were, who made that statement went to IMF. I, I, I thought, aha, that's what I'm saying. So we should be prudent enough to look for money internally to look after ourselves. I am surprised that its commission, I thought its commission was going to say that because of the bill, people will be afraid to come out. But they are talking about funding. It's not only about money. We are trying to discourage this kind of act. They themselves are saying that it's a spreader of HIV. Mm -hmm. 
and we need to discourage it. I, I believe, I haven't read the bill, but there should be some form of counseling for people who are in that situation. It's part of it. Okay, I haven't read it. <coughs> and you see, Bella, this is a very serious matter. When you, before, eh, when your friend's daughter and your daughter are close, sleeping in the same room when they come on holidays, you are fine. But today you get scared when you see your, your friend's son and your son close, mm. your friend's daughter and your daughter close. This is not something that we should play with. 275 um, MPs mm -hmm. is equal to Ghana. And as Ellen said, this is Ghana. We don't want it. It is not about human rights. Nobody is killing anybody. Nobody is beating anybody. Amnesty International, the, the um, foreign community, they don't agree to polygamy. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. So I don't think that people should just ram it down our throats and attach it to aid and all that. Even in the U.S., what did Trump do? Trump banned uh, transgenders from being in the army. And I'm telling you, the people in the country, when you spoke to them during Trump's time, they were happy that Trump was, Trump was able to, I mean, care some of the activities of the LGBTQ. Mm. But when it comes to freedom, America is one of the countries that uh, espouses democracy and freedoms. This is not a natural thing to be done. That is not how God created it. The first commandment of God was to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. How can a man and a man give birth? How can a woman and a woman give birth? So it, it is even against the order of God. It is against the order of God. So it, it's not something that has to be encouraged. But if somebody wants to go that way, we are not expecting you to come and flaunt it in front of anybody. We are not going to have wedding ceremonies for you. We are not going to beat you up. But we are saying that it is not in tandem with our culture. Mm. It's not in tandem with the values for which we grew up with. In the same way that the white man will tell you that polygamy is, 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 is a crime. Do you get me? They say polygamy is a crime. There's a word for it. It's just like when you marry two women abroad, it's a crime. Mm. Bigamy. Yeah. It is a crime. Bigamy. Yes. Uh -huh. Bigamy is a crime. Do you get me? But here you can marry two traditionally. It is not a crime. It is, that, that is not their value. That is not their core values. We are also saying that this is not our core value. My dear, one thing that even worries me is the, the way they have adulterated the rainbow. The rainbow is a, is a sign of peace, a sign of significance. Yeah. That God is present. Look, I have an experience, and I'll never forget it. I was flying to Portugal, and as I was there in the afternoon, I looked through, I was a bit scared. I don't like flying, but I like traveling. Mm. So I looked through the skies and I, said, I prayed. I said, God, are you there? If you are there, show me yourself. You know what I saw? Immediately I said that, I saw a rainbow. Mm. The plane were in turbulence. I saw a rainbow. So I asked the person sitting with me, that was my former boss, Mr. Sapon. Mr. Sapon, good morning. I asked him, have you seen the rainbow? He said, no. Bella, I'm telling you, the rainbow traveled with us mm. till we landed. Till we landed in Lisbon, the rainbow traveled with us. And I asked her, have you seen? Nobody saw it. So the way they have even adulterated the rainbow, sometimes you wonder what is going on. And God is against this. When you read the Bible, you read the Quran, African traditional religion, all of them are against this. So how can anybody call it um, um, what uh, human rights? What is human rights in this one? That you are doing something different from the norm, which is not even helping because people are getting anal infections. There are all manner of things are going on. There are anal uh, passages being protruded. It, it is there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of sicknesses, um, AIDS, all manner of things. And we are going to encourage the Amnesty International saying what? Has anybody killed anybody? Well, let's hear from Genevieve Partington. She's the country manager for Amnesty International. This is what she said last night on man. Ghana. No, she's Ghanaian on Ghana tonight. <laughs> on something that is happening in someone's bedroom, which is consensual, by the way, um, I don't see how that affects any of us our lives. Um, the other thing is that MPs are sworn into office 
with the mandate of protecting the rights of citizens. And this uh, bill, if it comes into law, is infringing on the rights of a specific group of citizens. Um, as much as we want to hide it or claim it's not been part of our culture or it's not part of our history books, it is. It's not foreign. It's been happening for a very long time. And it's about time we accept uh, persons from the LGBT community. They're not asking for anything. Um, we are the ones deciding, okay, we're going to um, you know, prohibit marriage, we're going to prohibit association. The bill clearly violates a lot of human rights. I'll give you one for example. Um, it's, it's infringing on freedom of expression. It's infringing on freedom of association. So basically you're telling me that if I'm an ally of the LGBTI community, then I face a certain number of years in prison. Okay, so Gabriela. Bella, please, I want to ask a question, please. Just a okay, please make she sure. She said we don't that have time. when, when um, somebody is doing something in their bedroom, that mm -hmm. like doesn't concern anybody. So if you kill your wife in your bedroom, there are no laws. It doesn't concern anybody. But this LGBT, before Gabby comes, this LGBTQ matter, you go have anal sex with whoever, not even with a male. Even if you do have it with a female and she has health complications, yes. and she goes to the hospital. Your taxes. Is it not our money that is being used to, to take care of the person? Okay. Gabriela. <laughs> this whole thing with the LGBT is a very interesting issue. But I mean, in contemporary times, it's one that has occupied a lot of minds, not just uh, for us here. But I think that it's very important that we are stating our position to legislature mm. on uh, where we stand on this issue. Um, I mean, for the last, what, like 20 years or so, it's become a whole global conversation and it's constantly being pursued to advance a certain group mm. of um, people to mm. bring legitimacy to what they are doing. They have a strong advocacy, that is true. And I'm, and I'm glad that in this bill, it kind of imposes restrictions on the advocacy, not just the practice. And that's why I'm saying that it's, it's, it's good that we, we are stating clearly where we stand on this. Because we don't even want to have a conversation about it mm. once the bill is passed. There are legislature, there's a, there, there, there are laws against prostitution in Ghana. There's, there are laws against unnatural carnal knowledge. Yeah. But people practice unnatural carnal knowledge in their bedrooms. And um, people practice prostitution when you drive in town at night. But the law exists. So my, my position on this is that allow the law to go to, because it's important that we state categorically where we stand. Mm. We're not the first country to try this. Uganda has done it, Nigeria has done it, Russia has it. And it also limits and brings a level of tolerance to how far we are willing to go on the parameters of LGBT. Because okay. if we don't put a halt to the conversations on LGBT, we're going to allow people to keep, and this thing with LGBT keeps expanding day in, day out. Mm -hmm. So they keep adding on their pluses. They bring another alphabet, then you yeah. add a plus. It means in future, something else is coming to, you know. So I think that Ghana's position on this is very important okay. for everybody. On the issue of um, we'll miss out on donor support and all that because of us doing this. Look, we have a society to protect. We have generations that are coming and born yet that have to be developed and crafted into a certain model of what is Ghanaian mm. and not foreign. And looking at the cultural and religious construct of our society, I don't know in which era that this thing will be accepted. I don't foresee it in the next 50 years, even if the law didn't exist, because of how our construct is. Mm. Some people have made the argument that we're... Um, um, what, what do they even say? We are a secular <laughs> state, and so we're actually not a secular state. We are a very religious state, but the reason why the Constitution grants us secularism is because we don't want to impose one religion's views on the other. Mm. And so we've assumed that we are a secular state. Whether in traditional worship, whether in religion, um, Christianity, whether in Islam, all these religions prohibit same-sex uh, relationships and same-sex marriage. Mm. So the position is very clear. From the length and breadth of this country, it's, people are against it. We went went campaigning, I said not, and that issue came up. People were opposed to it heavily, you know. So the position that Ghana is taking is important. On Madame Ersela's outburst, well, from what my understanding of what happened, 
Honorable Mutala was having a conversation with somebody, and the microphone picked it. Yeah. That, oh, okay. And it wasn't like he was making a matter of factual statements. It's like, I'm talking to an actor, like, have you heard that this person is a lesbian? And then you, somebody, you hear it. Okay. okay. That, but did he, was he referring to the communications minister, even in that conversation? <laughs> the, the communication minister in a personality profile interview on a... Please, it's okay. But I don't that, that, she herself that, mentioned oh, that Gabriela, she please. experimented with something like mm -hmm. that. And she but it doesn't regret. mean that, that she that is. No, I'm, I'm saying uh -huh. that she experimented with something like that and she doesn't regret it. And how our society and how people oh, behave, you know, it's like yeah, Chinese yeah, gossip. The message starts from one end mm -hmm. and then it's associated. Yeah, but to say that she is promoting or propagating it is another thing altogether. On the floor of parliament. I mean, as someone who protects my fellow woman, I'll be saying she is. her personal... No, no, but I don't... Okay. Please learn for me. So, we can wrap so, up. so, so, so uh, for me, it's important that we, we have this um, law established. Mm -hmm. Okay. This principle established. But by the way, we're looking at Nanaku Fado to see whether he'll be able to pass his own um, state of conflict. Here in one bed, he says it's bound to happen. Here in one bed, he says it'll never happen. And when he met Kamala Harris, that one thing was totally <laughs> in between. You couldn't see where exactly he is. So we wait to see whether when it's accepted like, by Parliament, like he's going to was sign. About well, the cash. Le let's the cash. see. <laughs> let's see what's going to come of it. But thank you so much for joining me this morning. Gabriela Tete is the Central Regional Communications Officer for the NDC. Nanaya Chimpim Jantua is the General Secretary for the CPP. And Ellen Amadeko is a member of the National Communications Team for the MPP. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.